Lake monster sightings are on the increase. A recent upsurge in the reports of lake monsters, sea serpents and other aquatic cryptids has been seen in the news. Nessie has been seen again after a long period of absence. A sea monster was spotted off the coast of the Isle of Wight and a huge creature resembling the Loch Ness Monster has been spotted in the Bristol Channel. Let's take a look at these recent sightings and ask why the sudden increase. Welcome to IF, videos on history and mystery. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a video again. Let's begin with the three reports I mentioned in the intro. The first being the superstar that is Nessie. She has been spotted twice in five days. A committed Nessie hunter from Ireland says he saw the monster on an official webcam just days earlier. A woman from Manchester said she noticed it while driving with her partner. Irish Nessie enthusiast Owen O'Fadhagen used a webcam to capture a dark shadow at the south side of Loch Ness near the Clansman Hotel. Describing the sighting he said, It's a great feeling you get when you have photographed something out of the ordinary in Loch Ness. Talking about the video he said, Nessie is the dark shape on the surface of Loch Ness on the opposite side of the loch. He went on to say he had been watching the webcam for about 20 minutes on the afternoon of the 27th when he noticed a dark object appear briefly just for a few seconds. Then it was gone. He replayed the live cam and stopped it to take the photo without zooming in. There was no other boat traffic on the lock at that time and the lock was calm. He knew immediately he had spotted Nessie and not a boat. Boats do not disappear from the screen. There was no further appearance of an object in that area after 20 minutes of watching. The second witness was Elisa Brennan, 30 and her partner Danny, 37. They were both driving near Urquhart Castle when they had their sighting of the famous lake monster. The woman managed to grab a quick picture showing an L-shaped black object on the water which could be taken as the head and neck of Nessie. Lisa said, We were driving around the lock and as we got to Urquhart Bay just before the castle, I spotted a dark object around three feet tall above the water surface. By the time I had got the camera ready on my phone, the object had lowered into the water so I only managed to get as much as I did on the photo as it then disappeared into the water. The second beast was seen in the Solent, the strait that separates the Isle of Wight from the mainland of England. A photograph was snapped showing a moving object swimming in the middle of the stretch of water. Three humps bobbing up and down in the water were spotted as Jo Wilde from Newport, Isle of Wight was heading to Cornwall. She took the picture from the deck of White Links Fishbourne to Portsmouth Ferry. Jo's husband Trevor from Newport said, it was right in the middle of the Solent which we find rather strange. It had a really shiny texture to it. I don't think there are any sandbanks near where the ferry goes for rocks to be able to poke out of the water. We've looked at the picture a lot and still it really confuses us. Whatever it was seemed to be gently moving alongside of the boat. I'm a skeptical man myself but could it have been the Loch Ness Monster? Well I don't think it was Nessie but it could be a similar type of creature. These animals are spotted across the world. I looked at what they could be in the video linked above. Then we have the sighting in the Bristol Channel. Jackie Shepherd was enjoying a meal at the Little Harp pub in Clevedon, Somerset with her husband when she saw the serpent shape in the water. Jackie said the beast was motoring along the sea from the direction of the pier towards the marine lake. The onlooker explained that the table next to her also saw what they thought was Nessie. Jackie drew a cartoon of the sea creature insisting she saw a living creature. There have been those that say what Jackie saw was nothing more than driftwood or if it were a living creature it could have been a large seal. This dismisses the sighting all too easily. There has over the many centuries been good witness testimony. 
if we only looked at Nessie, we see a long history. The first reported sighting of Nessie is said to have been made in 565 AD by the Irish missionary Saint Columba when he came across a giant beast in the river Ness. The stories have continued until today and the reports I mentioned at the start of this video. Some have proposed more mundane answers like Nessie expert Steve Feltnam who spent 24 years watching the lock. He thinks that it is a giant Wells catfish native to waters near the Baltic and Caspian seas in Europe. This to me does not explain the descriptions given for these creatures by witnesses. But let's not stray off topic, why have sightings started to increase? It could be down to climate change and its effect on upwellings. Winds blowing over the ocean's surface push water away. Water then rises up from beneath the surface to replace the water that has been pushed away. This process is known as upwelling. Upwelling occurs in the open ocean and along coastlines. The opposite process called downwelling also happens when wind causes surface water to build up along a coastline and this surface water eventually sinks toward the bottom. Water that rises to the surface as a result of upwelling is typically colder and rich in nutrients. These nutrients fertilize surface waters meaning that these surface waters often have high biological productivity. Upwelling systems could be likened to hidden forests. They have a dense abundance of ocean plants that supply massive amounts of food for fishery production. These ocean plants are also responsible for producing a huge part of the oxygen we breathe via photosynthesis. More than 60% of the oxygen we breathe being made by ocean plants. These hidden forests are at huge risks from ocean dead or oxygen minimum zones. Huge areas where oxygen is very low or non-existent. Microbial processes in these areas release a lot of greenhouse and nitrogen gases, key players in climate change, making the ocean more anemic and less productive. This is an event that can be likened to the deforestation of the Amazon. This upwelling process is under threat from the increase in sea temperature. The ocean is warming much faster than previously thought. This heating of the oceans causes more extreme weather. There has been a measured increase in the number and severity of hurricanes. As a hurricane moves across the ocean, it causes a strong upwelling. This can push animals from deeper water towards shore. We have seen this with a fish that is said to have inspired the tales of sea serpents, the oarfish. Oarfish only eat plankton but they can reach up to 56 feet in length. They live at depths of around 3,300 feet or 1,000 meters so they aren't very often seen. They inhabit tropical waters around the world which have been hit by increased hurricane activity. What if, like the oarfish and the many other species that have been pushed up from the deep, the creatures that these witnesses have spotted have also been forced to shallow or coastal waters by upwellings. The animals we see washing up on our beaches are seldom seen and could be classified as sea monsters by those unfamiliar with the creatures. What do you think? Are these witnesses seeing living animals? What type of animal could it be? And is climate change a possible answer to the increase in sightings? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like what I do here on the channel, hit that red button, like and share. You can catch the latest by searching We Are If. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.